Okay, everyone's coming in. Hi and welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Um, Anna and I are really excited to dive in. And uh, while we're waiting for folks to log in, uh, if you could jump into the chat. We've got it open today. We'd love to keep the energy up in there. Um, so please feel free to tell us where you're joining from and uh, you know what, what triggered you to join the session today, what you're hoping to get out of the session. So we've reserved plenty of time at the end of today's session for questions. Um, there is, in addition to the chat box, a dedicated Q&A functionality as well. So please go ahead and drop your questions for Anna. Thanks, Kate. Uh, please go ahead and drop your questions for Anna in the Q&A, and I will field those as she's talking, and then we'll handle as many as we can at the end. I know that this is a really interesting topic, and we're going to have uh, plenty of technical questions for Anna. Um, on a logistical note, the slides and a write-up of today's session and all the linked resources are going to be shared to all registered participants within a week of today's session. So look out for that in an email if you have to drop early or if you have colleagues who were registered who couldn't join um, live. All right, so quickly before I introduce Anna and we dive into the meat of today's exciting session, we've got a quick poll that we want to run. Um, asking you what area of technical SEO uh, your site or your client's sites are struggling with the most today. So give you a minute to pop a quick answer in. It is very cute. They see a lot of coworkers. Everybody wants to learn about technical SEO. Well, that's the best endorsement that they want to hear you at work and then hear you speaking externally too. Yeah, awesome. there is a lot to learn. <laughs> All right, we'll give you a few more seconds and then we're going to show the results of the poll. So. Core Web Vitals running, winning the race today. That's interesting. Um, but I'm also glad to see crawlability, indexability, my dear loves, and site architecture, because that's really on point for the that's content right. you're going to talk through. Awesome. So do you want to pop to the next slide? And we'll do a little bit of hyping up Anna before we dive in. Um, Anna is the SEO team lead at Sneak which is a developer focused web security tool and before joining sneak she was a technical seo manager at wix anna's current passion in the tech seo space is large-scale programmatic seo projects and we're going to learn uh, in great detail about one of those today um, some awesome photos we have to share you to give a little personal touch um, and is currently based in london and as all of the same people out there, she's a dog person. Um, what's the name of this cutie? It's Tommy. Hi, Tommy. And also, Anna loves arts and painting, and this is one of her recent projects. So lovely to see that. So as I mentioned, Anna's uh, focused on programmatic SEO and the challenges inherent to uh, template-driven large-scale content projects. And she's written and talked about that the background of this sneak advisor project before. And um, what we're going to talk about today is what comes after launching that project. So uh, in the case of sneak advisor, she had almost 200, 2 million new pages live. They were up for over a year and hadn't been indexed. So Anna's going to talk to us about 
the technical SEO improvements that she applied in order to get these URLs indexed at scale and how we use Lumar to measure the, the impacts of those changes to crawlability, to click depth, and to internal linking strength. There were some spoilers about how you measure the impact. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let me start from the agenda and quickly uh, walk through what we are going to cover. The first aspect is what is programmatic SEO? I feel that this is important to address because we're talking large scale websites, but we're not talking any large scale websites. The examples I'm going to use are uh, programmatic SEO strategy. And uh, afterwards, we will move to the four challenges of programmatic SEO. And we'll talk about how indexing can be a massive opportunity for scaling your organic traffic. Then we'll talk about the two ways of measuring um, technical SEO um, improvements that everybody of you is implementing. I'm pretty sure about it. And then we'll move to the Q&A section. And let me start by asking everyone this question. Have you heard about programmatic SEO and did you have a chance to implement it? There should be a poll launching right now. Like, let's collect some answers before we start. I'm really curious to know um, about the audience. And if you don't know about it, that's totally fine as well. Anna, I'm a, a panelist, so I can't vote. So I'll just say that I have heard about it, but I haven't tried it. So I'm going to wager that's what we're going to see the most of in the results. That's cool. That, that's totally fine, too, because um, in order to try programmatic SEO, you need uh, to have resources. You need to have dev resources. But I think more importantly, you need to have a good idea at core and a good strategy. If you have that, I'm pretty sure you'll find a company or the resources and you will build your case for doing that. Do we have the results? Oh, OK. That is very interesting that almost 50 percent of the attendees um, didn't hear about programmatic SEO. Well, I'm pretty sure that once we jump to the definition and a couple of examples, it will be super clear and you will understand this very familiar uh, concept to you. So let me jump uh, to the definition. Programmatic SEO is uh, a strategy of publishing unique high quality pages at scale using templates and databases. The goal of programmatic SEO is to drive traffic through thousands and even millions of pages. Does this ring a bell? Does this sound more familiar? Have you ever landed on a page that answers your needs, but at the same time looks kind of templated? Right in the chat. Um, and I wanna highlight a few things here in this definition. The high quality. Uh, there is this uh, stereotype uh, about programmatically generated pages being low quality, and this is a bad programmatic SEO strategy. You need to make sure that you identify a need and you're adding unique value with your pages. Obviously, you're going to take some information from the web. You're going to take some information from databases, but the way you compile it the way you serve it to the user and the additional benefit you put on top of it needs to solve a problem and the user needs to be content. Like, like with every SEO asset that uh, uh, you usually create, right? Value first. And uh, let me jump into a few um, examples of the companies we know and we might have landed on their pages but just didn't think that this is programmatic SEO strategy. TripAdvisor, who heard about TripAdvisor? Who heard about Right Move? Right in the chat, put thumbs up. Um, a very uh, classic example is you identify the theme. Theme here would be 10 best things to do. And then you identify the modifier, a word that will distinguish those millions, millions of pages, which in this case is a CD. So the intent is, as you can imagine, a list of activities to do in a certain place. So it is a collection of a sort. We could jump on a page if everybody wants just to check it out to see what is unique here. Um, just a sec. So we see the unique H1 title, subtitle, but everything else is pulled from somewhere. It is pulled from database or it is pulled from some sort of collection um, that 
that TripAdvisor already has. They're lucky to have these unique descriptions under it that add some rich text to the page. Uh, some other websites are less lucky and uh, they mostly uh, rely on visuals and data. The same happens with Rightmove. The theme here is, just a second. The theme here is properties to rent in, and then the modifier is the city. And the last example is actually the project that we worked on. And let me give you some background about the company and what we tried to achieve to better um, explain the value proposition that that asset was bringing in. So Sneak is generally focused on developer-first security. We want to make the world more secure, the software world more secure. And how do you do this? By making every developer familiar with security and um, making the security tools available and easy to use for them. But what if developers are not familiar with uh, security concept? Then as a marketer, you wanna meet them where they are, where they exist and introduce them to that concept. So as we know at Sneak, a lot of developers are using open source packages to build their applications. And there are multiple sites where you can see metrics like popularity, maintenance, versions, et cetera. And sometimes it takes an effort to find all those metrics throughout all those uh, portals. So what we did, we have built one page that helps a developer make a perfectly um, rounded decision about, about which package to use and whether this is the version they want to use. And at the same time, we are introducing the element of security there. So this is how the page looks. Uh, right in the chat, if you see the templated element of it as on TripAdvisor and the other pages, not very content heavy, but this is how the asset looks. And this is what we are going to talk about. This is where we made the technical SEO improvements. Let me just stop sharing it for a second and then share it again. We are back. So this is what we are going to talk about, this asset and how we drastically improved organic traffic on this asset. What did we see in common on all of those three examples? The pages are templated, the content is usually thin, and there is usually large volume of pages on those assets. So all of that leads us to four major challenges of programmatic SEO. The first one is crawlability. And when I talk about crawlability, I mean structure. It is critical for you to think ahead about how you will structure the asset in a meaningful way that uh, makes sense to the user and to Googlebot. Here, it is very important to keep in mind that you want your most important pages to be discovered and indexed first. But then it takes us to indexing and crawling budget um, challenge because even though you might have 100K most important pages, you still have 2 million pages and you want all of them indexed, right? How do you do that without wasting your crawling budget? And how do you convince Google that all of those 2 million pages are valid? So those are two challenges that are related to structure and the large volume of pages. Then we have two other challenges related to content, theme content and duplicate content. They're related, theme content is because when you build something programmatically, there is just physically a limit of unique content you can produce for them. And that can cause content duplication. If two pages, for example, are too similar to each other or too thin, Google might think that they are not worth indexing separately, that they are just a duplication. And if you run into that problem, then 
and that will cause indexing issues and crawlability issues because Google won't crawl duplicate content. So instead of calling this four challenges, we could just call it a loop of challenges with programmatic SEO. But let's think about it for a second. Imagine you have 2 million pages and you have 100,000 pages indexed. Imagine, so you have 1.9 uh, million pages that are not indexed. Imagine if each one of those pages would bring you at least one click. It means you're sitting on 1.9 million clicks a month that you're not seeing at all. So how do you unlock that potential? And the answer we came up with not instantly after a year of working on this project that unlocking this massive traffic opportunity can happen through indexing more pages. This beautiful visual shows that in 2021, we were getting 150K clicks a month. And now we are getting 1 million clicks a month just to that asset and just through the changes we made. And I know as much as this visual is pretty, the, the colors are beautiful. We are all SEO folks, and we what do we love? What do we love, right, uh, in the chat? Exactly. We love graphs, and we love Google Search Console. That's why. And also, we love screenshots, right? So that's why we have a, uh, a slide uh, with a screenshot of actual clicks from Google Search Console. On this slide, you can see um, clicks in the past six months versus the previous six months to Sneak Advisor. And you can see that organic clicks have more than doubled in the past six months. Why this time frame? Because that is when we have implemented the changes. The other metrics I look at, but don't necessarily track here are the average CTR. It is really good that it has increased and the average position that stayed um, more or less flat. Meaning that the pages we have indexed are of the equi equi equal quality to the previous ones. We didn't drop the CTR. We didn't lose the average position. Right, just checking in on, on the chat and what's going on. Please feel free to uh, ask questions, write comments. I really want this to be as interactive as possible. And moving to the next slide, here is the explanation of how we did it, more, more or less, like in the, in the very... A general scale of things. Uh, this slide shows that we started at around 400k thousand pages indexed, and currently we have 1,313,000 pages indexed. So this is how you index the pages, you get the traffic, as simple as that. But how do you get there? In the next slide, I'm going to address the specific changes we've incorporated for this to happen. And did you raise your hand? Did you want to say something? Uh, that was just a celebratory hand raise. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought maybe you have a question. All right, so let me move to the slide where we're actually going through the changes we have implemented. And they might seem simple. I will be happy to hear your questions. But at the same time, I wanted to wow you with the numbers because simple sometimes can be very powerful. So first of all, we have created directory pages to make the asset more crawlable. This is how this page looks like. And as I mentioned before, it is very important to distinguish the most important pages versus the pages that are less important. That's why we had a category popular there. So, so that's, this is the first page that Google crawls and then are this all content generated by human or AI? Uh, this content is not generated by AI. This content is generated through databases and with for specific formulas and automation, it is calculated and uh, showcased in a specific form of graphs. So it is all pre-done, but it is not an AI. We, we didn't use AI content writers there. Then the next thing is improved internal linking. So what we mean here and what I really encourage you to do, if you have a very large scale website, think in terms of 
patterns. Think how you can link pages together. What is the criteria that groups them? Is it a category? Sometimes it can be a letter, like alphabetical letter. Sometimes you can show the top 10 by clicks, top 10 popularity. Try to think out of the box to group pages in a certain way if there is no obvious pattern, because you need scale here. You can't uh, use the same tactics you use in content where you manually hand pick. Uh, and if you have a smaller website, there are multiple plugins uh, that you can use to automate this process for content and for landing pages. But this is for smaller websites. And lastly, try to spot those opportunities um, from design and layout perspective. For example, here, as you saw the template of our page, we have this um, form with package health score on every package page. And then it has templated security, popularity, maintenance, community criteria, and those are being labeled. And those labels are also preset. So what we did, we did them click through and we grouped all the packages with that specific label. So this enabled deep linking from every package page to a list of at least um, 1,000 um, packages. So now the question, how would you measure the impact of technical SEO changes that you are implementing? Please write in the chat. Let's wait for a few answers to come in. I'm really curious. If you did something large scale, you had a lot of resources invested in it, how would you measure it? Ben, how would you measure it? Top of the funnel acquisition, Google Search Console. Increase in index pages, conversion sales, number of pages indexed, increase in traffic. Really good ones. SEM rush, rankings on page one. Oh my God, those are really, 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 really good parameters. And I think that all of them are correct. It's just some of them are less applicable when you have two, two millions pages. You need to think of how can you draw some conclusions and really quickly, whether you're moving in the right direction or in the wrong direction. Google Search Console is definitely the go-to place, but let's see what I have prepared in my slide. So I'm suggesting that uh, we measure the impact of technical SEO changes with two ways. The first one is internal stack. And the second one is external stack, which is Google Search Console, Google Analytics, and all other favorite tools that you have in your portfolio. This is how uh, we measured the changes with Lumar. We knew that we have a problem because we only had 400K pages indexed and we had 2 million pages. So we knew we were sitting on a huge opportunity there, but we didn't know why Google is not indexing them. Is Google not indexing them because they are thin content, because of other issues, or uh, because it just thinks that it is enough of sneak advisor in the web, you know, everything else is not necessary. So in order to address that, we did an initial crawl, which you can see in the column before here. And the crawler was able to find only 500,000 pages, which matches what we saw in Google Search Console. Then after we have implemented the technical SEO uh, improvements, we did another crawl. And this time the crawler, and this time the crawler discovered 1 million, 1.7 million pages, which means we had a huge issue in crawlability and the changes did address it, which, which was 232% increase after the changes were made. So, why it is important to measure these changes internally. First of all, because you need to report on the progress and external tools don't always pick up on the changes really fast. And second of all, you want to know if the changes you've made had a positive impact or not. Should you continue investing that? Should you continue doing that? Um, the screenshot below shows that the changes 
were made in September. And we did start seeing uh, an increase in traffic since September, but we didn't see any increase in pages indexed up until December when we saw a huge jump, literally they doubled. Does it mean that we didn't have more pages, uh, pages indexed increase? I don't think so because the traffic was growing and we did measure it. We were getting new hits from new pages, but sometimes Google Search Console is slightly delayed on a few aspects, especially when we deal with such high scale uh, traffic and websites. And the second way to measure it is obviously with Google Search Console and everything you wrote in the chat is super great metric. Keywords is a great metric too. We track that too. And I'm talking about, you know, some high level parameters that if you see are improving, then you're on the right track. And then you can drill down into more specific metrics. So here we see uh, organic traffic performance in Google Search Console report. And I wanna give you a tip here because I've, I'm being asked a lot about how to avoid the Google Search Console limitations. You can only see 1000 rows there. Um, my advice here is to use search analytics for sheets. It's a plugin that helps you to pull all your data for keywords, for pages, for clicks. Um, and then when you have all that data, you can look at how many new pages you've got um, indexed week over week. And you can do it by looking at pages that previously had zero clicks and now are bringing in clicks. And then the second thing you can calculate is how much traffic those new pages are bringing in. And that will help you understand what is the incremental addition to your traffic from those newly indexed pages. A, a little bit manual, but you don't need any specific tool for that. And uh, it's very relatively tech easy, low tech, low tech hack. Um, the second thing is obviously indexing a report in Google Search Console that might be delayed. We already know that. Don't be worried if you don't see a spike straight ahead. And lastly, sitemaps. We didn't talk a lot about sitemaps here, but it is important. Never ignore it. Upload fresh, fresh files and track how Google is checking in and indexing them. You probably would want to see a very uh, proportional increase of pages indexed in every sitemap file. But yeah, that is a separate topic. I guess that is it from me, Anne. What do you think? Yeah, a lot of questions have come through. I want to give you a chance to take a sip of water if you want um, and take a breath and um, encourage folks to continue sending in questions over the next couple of minutes. The first one I want to ask while we're on this slide has to do with what you mentioned, the data limitations, particularly due to sampling and particularly because you're working on a really large site and a large number of pages. Did you use the domain GSC property to pull this data or did you create a URL property for this particular directory in order to get more granular data for tracking? Fantastic question. So we have a domain property. Um, we have URL property. And we have it for every subsection that we want to track. It is very, very convenient and very useful, especially if you have blog or you have product and you just want, you know, instead of going to your main report and then filtering page that contains product, why don't you just create a, a property, your domain slash product? Then you just click on that and you have most up-to-date data and keywords that are only related to that. And then it is also easier to build um, tables and pull the data and like it's it's so much better definitely creates multiple properties in google search console so if i had the google sheets extension search analytics for sheets i also plus one that i use that pretty frequently um, this is a live hyperlink which will be with the uh, slides when they're distributed as well as highlighted in the blog free tools uh, everybody loves free tools why not for sure um, uh, Maggie wants to know, was the internal linking all done manually? I am glad to hear that you did not, because that would have been um, a Herculean effort. You mentioned that there are some plugins that can be helpful to do that kind of internal linking for smaller sites, building 
you know, popular, most popular content links or resources alphabetically. But how did Sneak do this at scale? Yeah, so that is the hard thing. Um, you need to have dev resources. And to be honest, I don't think that internal links is a very costly task for them. That should be fairly easy. You just need to come with a specific ask. You need to say, I want internal links to work with this logic. And the logic is on you. You can't come to developer and say, well, I want crawlability, fix it. Or I want internal links to work perfectly, fix it. You need to come with that logic. You need to say, I want this page to show links that are related to it in this certain way. And then once you write down the logic together, they just implement it, but it is coded. Um, in my understanding, you know, like uh, when we had in university, these courses with Excel, with if function, if this, then that, I have a feeling that is very similar when you, when you conceptualize that. So we've got a question here from Irelina about programmatic SEO for smaller websites. I know this is something near to your heart, Anna. Um, is any of what you've shared applicable to small sites? So if we're talking about small sites, I encourage you to think about tools that you can create. Um, I came up, uh, uh, I came across so many calculators, so many checkers, so many aggregators. Try to find um, something that people search in your niche and maybe build a tool because that can be a different type of programmatic. Um, probably it's not called programmatic, probably it's called an SEO tool, SEO uh, driven tool page. Uh, but I think that concept would be more relevant. If we're talking about this specific presentation, I think one thing to take uh, from it for smaller sites is that we have proven that internal links and site structure really matters and do not neglect it. Like map out the structure of your website, uh, no matter how small or big it is. And uh, if you have Word, if you're using WordPress or any other uh, website builders, use the plugins for internal links, use the um, rank math, use all, all sorts of plugins that you have out there to help you optimize the structure and internal links. So Cathal is curious about the directory pages. Um, is the content on the directory pages dynamic or static? So for instance, if a new package page was created, would that be appended to the last page of each of the relevant directories or would it reshuffle the content of the directories that it was included in? So it is definitely taking into consideration the new packages that are being added to the database and they're being uh, added to Sneak Advisor. There is a frequency when it is updating because all of it is very expensive with servers, et cetera, et cetera. But they are being added there at some point. I do not recall at which frequency, once a month, once a quarter, but they're being revisited. And I also saw one question in the chat um, about um, those directory pages being similar to uh, HTML sitemaps. That is absolutely true. We call them directories, but this is literally a, a, an HTML sitemap of a sort. Um, I didn't use that word because we also used other things like um, tags and um, other sorts of groupings, but it is a similar concept. Yeah, uh, I know I spent some time yesterday just looking around on the site and and getting a sense of uh, all of the details of how this was implemented. So I encourage everyone who attended today to go see. This is a, definitely a best case practice. There was also a question, Anna, about if and how you used XML sitemaps or manual link submission in Google Search Console to, to uh, speed up crawling and discovery of this new system when you implemented the directory pages and the large scale internal linking. So, this is my hunch. I think that the changes themselves had more impact than the sitemaps we have submitted. Because previously, um, we dedicated a lot of time to just playing with sitemaps. That was a project of its own. 
let's categorize them like that. Let's uh, regroup them like that. Let's upload new ones. Let's let let's mix and match. We had a lot of thinking and like around that. But no matter how we were submitting the sitemaps, how frequent and in what batches, this did not impact the number of pages indexed. Once we introduced these changes and the site became more crawlable itself, we obviously did submit the new sitemaps, right? So, but I feel that it was mostly the change we made itself rather than the sitemaps we have submitted. I think that makes a lot of sense. I've seen that in my work as well. I think it really would depend on how healthy the rest of the site is and how, how healthy the remainder of the XML sitemaps were. Uh, it depends on the, if the XML sitemaps were an additional signal or the only signal through which this new system could be discovered. Since your system is so easily crawlable and so well configured, it makes sense that that was what you what you see as the leading signal that Google could use to discover this new work. Uh, so I think we do have one send off slide after the Q&A to share with some additional links and resources and promotions including a link to uh, Anna's blog about the programmatic SEO more from the content generation and database side. And we do have our next uh, tech SEO webinar coming up for Lumar on the 16th in a couple of weeks, um, which is about how to merge content SEO and tech SEO for, for growth. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time today to share this awesome case study. Uh, may I answer one last question? Because Please do. I feel that I feel the stage that is yours. People, I feel that it is a little bit a tricky one, but I feel a lot of people have it in mind. So it's a question from Mark. Uh, you achieved the goal of indexing all those additional pages, which is great. Did you see conversions? However, you define those. Um, and I think this is a great question because no one will think that the project is successful if you didn't um, move the bottom line and get more conversions. So let me show you, first of all, one slide that I already showed, this one. Uh, the line there uh, that says advisor NPM package. So NPM package is the highest converting page, type of page on the site. And as we can see here, after indexing, um, after making those changes, we had 556% increase in discoverability of those pages. So this is the first factor. We have indexed more of the right type of pages. This is first. And second, simply answering your question, yes, we doubled our conversions. Free signups. That's it, Anne. Uh, I'm sorry for jumping in in the last minute, but I just felt that question was important to answer. No, absolutely. And I think even before Mark's question, Annie had one that that we have time to cover as well. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Yeah.